everyone and welcome to Action RPG. I'm your host Aaron and for today's video we're headed to the world of Last Epoch once again. I feel like I saved the best for last. My new favorite skill inside of Last Epoch is the mastery skill for Warlock Chthonic Fisher. And right now in the background you see it in its default form. Throughout this video I'm going to break down everything that is possible with this new awesome skill. So let's start with the tooltip for Chthonic Fisher. Open an infernal fisher in the ground dealing fire damage over time to enemies on top of it as well as releasing spirits from the fissure that seek nearby enemies these spirits inflict enemies with torment a curse that slows and deals necrotic damage over time one max active fisher and scaling tags is fire necrotic spell damage over time curse and intelligence hit alt for the advanced tooltip of course you have your four percent damage for intelligence added damage for the fisher applied at 100 percent effectiveness each second added damage for the spirits applies at 25 percent effectiveness and torment applies 12 percent less movement speed deals 120 damage over three seconds and added damage applies at 600 percent effectiveness so what we're gonna do as you can see this is a massive massive skill tree so we're going to take care of the bottom left first. We're going to cover this whole section right here first. Starting off with Fragile Crust. Chthonic Fisher costs less mana and it refunds some of its mana cost if there is a cursed player, rare enemy, or boss within 20 meters. When you cast it, this effect also works if you are cursed. So it helps you with a little bit of mana. Moving on to Spirit Gale. When tormented enemies die, they have a chance to release the spirit to inflict a and torment another enemy within eight meters. So this is a way for your spirits to chain. You kill the enemy, it literally pops out of it and goes to another target. Moving down, Damned Waters. Your spirits hits inflict enemies with damned. I feel like people are gonna really like the next node, Twisted Waves. Torment deals more damage, multiplicative per 2% uncapped necrotic resistance. Damage per 2% necrotic resistance, one damage per point, and you can put up to three points. And remember that your necrotic resistance, specced correctly in the passive tree, you will be starting at 95%. It's going to be really easy to get that necrotic resistance at two or even 300%. Moving to the node to the left, you have Grim Tide. Chthonic Fisher and Ailments it inflicts deal more necrotic damage multiplicative per 1% added critical strike multiplier. Necrotic damage 1%, added critical strike 1%. So there has been some rumblings out there. Hey, is there any crit? Is there any crit multipliers or anything we can do around crit? there will be some options, okay? There will be some options. So bouncing up now to the left, Severed Wards, the Spirits hits Shred Enemy Necrotic Resistance. You can get up to three stacks of Necrotic Shred. Moving down, Singed by Tear, the Spirits hits Shred Fire Resistance. So you could Shred Necrotic and Fire. In the bottom left node, Return Below. When spirits, when spirits torment an enemy inflicted by Infernal Shade, they consume the shade, causing it to instantly deal its remaining damage and increases all existing cathodic fissure frequency of releasing spirits up to a maximum. So what I'm gonna do is play some gameplay of cathodic fissure with us specced into Infernal Shade. <laughs> Now let's talk about the top left of this tree. If there is anybody out there that likes lazy play style, if there's anybody out there that likes one button builds, you are gonna love this node I'm about to show you. There's already a lot of smart people in the last Epoch Discord that have made this prediction. Fellfire, tormenting and ignited enemy spreads all of the ignite stacks from it to a number of other enemies around it. 
so you can spread out your ignite. Stygian Current, the Fisher releases spirits more frequently. Self-explanatory. The Gloom of Flames, Chaotic Fisher now creates a secondary Fisher in an opposite direction that casts its own spirits. Enemies take damage from both Fishers if they stand on both, but the Cathodic Fisher costs significantly more mana. Now for this node right here, you will see that you can only have one active Fisher. But since you're extending it, it is basically like you now have two. It's just one long, big Fisher, which releases more spirits. And the node directly under it. Chaotic Rupture. Spirits now have a chance to be replaced by a cast of Chaos Bolts that consume a portion of its mana and scale with your Chaos Bolts tree. Chaos Bolts cast this way have a chance to have no additional projectiles. Chance to replace Spirits with Chaos Bolts, 20%. And if you put three points into it, 60%. Check this out. let's cover the bottom of this tree and if there's any minion fans out there you're gonna love this warlock summoner will be possible okay eradication cathodic fisher deals more damage multiplicative to rare enemies and bosses this effect is doubled if the enemy or you are cursed moving on down to beacon of torment spirits now target you instead of the enemies and whenever you are tormented or torment's duration on you is refreshed you gain additional spell damage and endurance threshold this buff can stack and is the same dur duration as torment but persists if torment is cleansed this gives you a huge boost to your damage but be careful with it be very careful moving to the right grasp of the undying the Fissure deals more direct damage for each second it is active, multiplicative, and you leech a portion of the damage it does. So you're a little stronger with your Fissure and get some of that life back. Moving on down to the Sunder's Domain. You now have additional Fissures active at a time, but spirits are less are released less frequently. If a Fissure is placed over an existing one, the new Fissure closes after one second. So when you take Domain, you are now going to be able to have two active fissures. And before somebody asks or goes in testing it, unfortunately, you can't have two active fissures and make them twice the size. This is literally the first thing I tested was, can I have two huge fissures, which would be like having four fissures? No, it doesn't work, unfortunately. Moving to the left, Deepest Ravine. Cathodic fissure deals more damage multiplicative, but it no longer releases spirits. And to the right, Rekindled Graves. Fisher now casts Volatile Zombies every two seconds, but consumes mana equal to a portion of the Volatile Zombies mana cost. Volata volatile zam Zombies cast this way has a chance to not create multiple zombies if it could otherwise. You want to see some zombies running out of your fissures? Check this out. break down one of Cathodic Fisher's conversion. Kind of top right over here. Death from below. Cathodic Fisher deals more damage. Multiplicative. This, this effect is doubled if you are cursed. Mantle of Flames. The Fisher gains a percentage of your global chance to ignite on hit as ignite chance per second. Additionally, this Fisher has a base chance to ignite enemies each second. And to the right of that, Blood Gulch. Cathodic Fisher's base fire damage is converted to physical. 
Consequently, this damage scales with increased to physical damage, but not increased to fire damage. The ignite chance from all sources are converted to bleed chance per second for the Fisher. Swaps Cathodic Fisher's fire tag for physical che tag. Check this out. Moving over to the top nodes, you have Chronicles of Ruin, Torment lasts longer and any Ignite, Poison and Bleed afflicted by Chthonic Fisher also lasts longer. You have Tomb, Gorger, Torment deals more damage, multiplicative to Ignited, Poisoned and Bleeding enemies. You have Fell Fire, Torment and, Ign Torment and Ignited enemy spreads all of your Ignite stacks from it to a number of other enemies around it and a conversion that a lot of people have been disappointed that they have not seen. Poison. Valley of Defilement. Chthonic Fisher's base fire damage over time is converted to poison. Consequently, this damage scales with increase to poison damage, but not increase to fire damage. Ignite chance from all sources is converted to poison. Chance per second for Fisher. Swaps Chthonic Fisher's fire tag for poison. You want to see a green Fisher? We are now in the home stretch, and don't worry, I saved a very special node. Moving to the right of this tree. Pyro, the Fisher's initial impact now hits enemies dealing spells fire damage with added damage applying at 300% effectiveness. Ash Cloud, the Fisher's initial impact now spreads all of your ignite stacks from the target to nearby enemies up to a maximum. Moving on down. Fisher of Wrath, the Fisher's initial impact now deals additional spell damage with a higher chance to stun per 2% ignite chance. This effect scales with bleed or poison if the Fisher has been converted to physical or poison. And a question that I have gotten over and over again. Acid Skin, Forbidden Chasm. The Fisher's initial hit now causes enemies or curses enemies with Acid Skin one of Warlock's new curses, which causes them to take poison damage over time and has a chance to be critically struck. Moving on down further, Acid Bane. Your hits against enemies cursed by Acid Skin have additional base critical strike chance per 10% of your global increased poison damage. This bonus critical strike chance is not affected by other critical strike chance modifiers. There's where you get your Acid Skin. And the final node up here, top right. Cathodic Passage. When directly casting Cathodic Fisher, you now travel along the Fisher as it opens. But this adds a cooldown to Cathodic Fisher. Cathodic Fisher gains the traversal tag. Yes, you could turn this into a movement speed or a movement skill and open your fissure. Check this out.
Now, before we are done, I do want to showcase some gameplay. I want to showcase some true one button builds. And by no means am I saying that this is going to be synergized, that this is going to be what you should do or the best thing end game. I just want to showcase for you a one button build. We're going to spec into Chthonic Fisher, and this is going to be triggering Chaos Bolts. And Chaos Bolts are going to be triggering Rip Blood, Bone Curse, and Harvest. Check this out. All right, everyone, that's going to do it for my new favorite skill in Last Epoch, Chthonic Fisher. You've now seen all the skills. You've now seen the passive tree. You know all the curses. Do you plan on maining Warlock come February 21st? What are you most excited about? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. We have still so much testing to do. Build guides, leveling guides, we have so much planned. I'm just so excited for the future of EHG and the future of Last Epoch. Of course, if you ever need anything or have any suggestions, reach out on Discord. I'm done. Hopefully you're entertained or at least learn something. Aaron, out. Thank you.